Hey everyone, this is Ben with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in my previous videos I discussed skeletal muscle tissue and cardiac muscle tissue. In this video I'm going to cover the third and final type of muscle tissue which is called smooth muscle tissue. Now smooth muscle is quite a bit different than those other two muscle types. However, it also shares some similarities. So I'm gonna tell you some of the key concepts you need to know about smooth muscle tissue. First, let's talk about smooth muscle location. Whereas cardiac muscle is only located in the heart and skeletal muscles mostly attached to bones, smooth muscle tissue is found throughout the body. And to remember the main locations, I created a simple mnemonic to help you. Just remember the word stove. S stands for skin, specifically those erector pili muscles that cause goosebumps. T stands for tracts found in the reproductive, respiratory, and urinary systems. O stands for organs that are hollow, such as the intestines, the bladder, the uterus, stomach, and so on. V stands for vessels, and smooth muscle is going to help those blood vessels constrict. And then E stands for eyes, and specifically smooth muscle is going to help iris contraction as well as movement of the lens. Now as we take a look at the shape of smooth muscle, you'll notice that it has a shape that's referred to as fusiform, which resembles a football or a spindle shape. And this is different from cardiac muscle tissue, which develops into that irregular branched pattern, or skeletal muscle tissue, which consists of fibers that are very long and cylindrical. However, like skeletal and cardiac muscle, you'll find that smooth muscle is also surrounded and separated by a connective tissue called endomysium. Now, one key difference with smooth muscle cells is that they are only going to have one nucleus, which is located in the central portion of the cell. So that single nucleus and smooth muscle cells be like, all by myself, don't wanna be. In contrast, skeletal muscle tissue has multiple nuclei around the peripheral portion, whereas cardiac muscle usually has one or maybe two nuclei, which are also centrally located. Now let's talk a little bit about the layers of smooth muscle because it will often develop in layers within an organ to help that organ move in different ways so it can perform its job. For example, in most of the digestive system, smooth muscle cells are formed into two layers with different orientations which work together to propel food down the digestive tract, a process known as peristalsis. You have a longitudinal layer and this word starts with long, and that will help you to remember that these cells run along the whole length in a long way of the organ as the outermost smooth muscle layer, helping it become shorter during contraction. And then there is a circular layer, which is deep to that longitudinal layer and runs in a perpendicular direction to it. And this is going to form around the organ circumference in a circular direction, hence the word circular. And this is going to narrow or constrict the organ during contraction. Now the stomach is unique in that it actually has a third layer of smooth muscle, which is called an oblique layer. And this helps to further break down food before it reaches the intestines. Now, just like cardiac muscle tissue, smooth muscle tissue is controlled involuntarily via the autonomic nervous system. And that means you don't actually consciously control when your smooth muscle is going to contract. And remember, skeletal muscle is the only muscle tissue type of the three that you can actually control voluntarily. Now, as we take a look at the structure of smooth muscle tissue, you'll notice that it has a different structure. Smooth muscle does not contain sarcomeres, the organized contractile units that are found in both cardiac and skeletal muscle tissue, nor does it contain myofibrils, which are those rod-like structures made up of the repeating segments of sarcomeres. Because smooth muscle lacks both of those things, myofibrils and sarcomeres, it does not contain the striations or that striped pattern that characterizes both skeletal and cardiac muscle tissue. And that is an important point to remember for exams. Smooth muscle is the only muscle tissue type that does not contain striations or those stripes, and that's why it's actually called smooth. However, smooth muscle tissue does consist of the same thin actin filaments and the thick myosin filaments found in both skeletal and cardiac muscle tissue, 
which work to contract the muscle fiber via a sliding filament mechanism. And these are just kind of dispersed throughout the cytoplasm of the cell. Now, as you look at this illustration of a smooth muscle fiber, you'll notice the single nucleus in the center, and there is a net-like structure running throughout this muscle fiber. And these little dots that you see here on this net structure, these are called dense bodies. And the dense bodies attach to the sarcolemma, which is the smooth muscle cell's outer sheath. And they work much like the Z-discs in the sarcomere, when I talked about that in my skeletal and cardiac muscle videos. And these are going to allow the thin filaments to attach to them. The dense bodies also allow for the attachment of these intermediate filaments, such as desmin and vomentum, which run throughout the cell in a networked fashion, adding both strength and stability to it. Now let me give you a quick overview of how smooth muscle contracts because it's going to use the slotting filament mechanism which is similar to that of skeletal and cardiac muscle. During contraction, calcium ions initiate a reaction that causes the phosphorylation of myosin, causing those heads on the myosin filaments to rise up and bind to the actin filaments, pulling them forward in the process. Now as those myosin filament heads slide the actin filaments forward, they're going to also pull on those dense bodies to which the actin filaments attach, which then pulls on that network of those intermediate filaments running throughout the cell. Thus, the entire smooth muscle fiber contracts or shortens. Now, it's important to note that there are actually two subtypes of smooth muscle tissue. You have single unit and multi-unit smooth muscle. And the single versus multi prefix there is primarily referring to the number of nerve fibers required to activate the smooth muscle tissue. In single unit smooth muscle, also called unitary smooth muscle, it's only going to be innervated by maybe one or very few nerve fibers per bundle. And there's no need to have many nerve fibers because one nerve fiber can actually contract an entire sheet of smooth muscle in unison due to the presence of gap junctions, which allow the electrical signal to spread rapidly to all of the adjoining smooth muscle cells. And if you think of like a string of Christmas lights, for example, that would be an example of a single unit smooth muscle because you only have to have one plug, a single plug on the Christmas lights, but when you plug it in, the way those Christmas lights are constructed, the electrical signal rapidly passes to all those little individual lights and they come on. So that would be an example of single unit smooth muscle. And this type of smooth muscle is primarily found in the hollow organ, such as the intestines, which is why it's also sometimes called visceral smooth muscle. And of course, viscera refers to your organs or guts. Now, multi-unit smooth muscle, however, these smooth muscle cells are going to contain fewer gap junctions. So the electrical impulse is not going to be able to spread across all the cells as efficiently as the single unit smooth muscle. So each cell is going to require its own electrical impulse. Hence, there are going to be multiple nerve fibers found here to deliver that impulse. So whereas a string of Christmas lights is going to be analogous to a single unit smooth muscle, the multi-unit smooth muscle would be like five individual lamps that you have to plug in to get their own power. And this type of smooth muscle is going to be found more in the skin, the eyes, the blood vessels, and so on. Okay, that wraps up this video over smooth muscle tissue. I hope that helped you out. If it did, please give the video a thumbs up. You can take a free quiz to test your knowledge over this material. The link is down in the description of the video. Also, we have a whole playlist of anatomy and physiology videos, so you might want to check those out. Thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe.